check, check, check one, two. Okay, this is going to be a video explaining how to create and compile your own Sierra chart custom study. This is a request I'm getting more and more frequently. So I'm just going to show you the basic steps and then you can uh, take it from there and build your own studies. So the first thing that you need to know about Sierra chart is that you can build your own custom studies in the C++ programming language and you can compile them and add them to Sierra chart to run on the incoming data that is coming in on the symbols here I have an equity but this will work equally well on any instrument that you're trading or watching rather through Sierra so the first thing that you're going to need is a text editor now Sierra does come with a text editor called notepad plus plus so if you want to start writing your uh, first study you can just go ahead and do new open under the analysis menu, new open custom studies file, and I am going to open tutorial, which is going to be that, and I actually already have it open here, so I'll just bring it up here. I'm using a different text editor, Vim. You don't need to use Vim. You can use the one that's built in uh, Notepad++. You can use Notepad. You can use whatever you want. As long as it edits text, it's fine. I prefer this text editor for reasons I won't get into in this uh, tutorial. But here we have a template outline of a basic study for Sierra chart. And this is point, I should probably explain what C++ is. If you're not a developer, you're going to need to learn a little bit about programming. C++ is a programming language. Um, this is an example of a C++ file that is consumed by Sierra, compiled, and turned into a custom study. Um, starting at line one here on the top, Apple just hit high a day. Starting at line one here on the top, uh, I'm basically telling my C++ program to go ahead and include all the Sierra chart libraries of code so that we can access various things in Sierra chart. This is a must have. The second must have for Sierra is this function called SCDLL name, and I'm naming this study frozen tundra tutorial one um, in here you can put whatever you want to call this study that you're making okay um, you can actually include multiple studies in one one file so this would actually be the the library of studies that you want to build but i'm going to do a one-to-one -one right now where i'm going to make a tutorial one file with a tutorial one study but if you wanted to you could create uh something like this several tutorial studies and then you could have multiple studies in here starting with one two three four and just continue them here as their own study we're not going to do that here today we're going to keep it really simple so a one-to-one -one, one study inside one file and that's it um, this right here is a form of a comment this does not get read by the c++ compiler it's just me telling humans what i'm doing and you can see another form of comment using these double slashes saying what is happening in my program i recommend you comment your code as you're writing it so you know what the heck you were doing when you come back months or years later and you're like, why did I do this? Um, a question I ask myself very frequently. So I will, you'll see comments uh, with these double forward slashes, Tesla's on highs, uh, everywhere in my code. This is the beginning of the study and it's a function that is called SCSF tutorial one. And this function is basically a Sierra chart specific function. You have to have the format like this. You have to pass in this parameter, um, which is an SC study interface reference parameter. And um, you need to have this piece here, line nine, and ending with these squiggly, starting and ending with these squiggly brackets. This is a must uh, in order to have. Now, what do I have inside of here? I have a logging object. It's just an SC string object. This is where I'm going to uh, go ahead and make messages that I want to send over to Sierra chart from within my code. Let's say if I need to send a message to the log or I need to format some message to be displayed on the screen or I want to create something that I want to display a text string, I'm going to use this uh, object. It's just a handy thing. This set of code here, this code block, is where you set your defaults. So when I am starting uh, by adding uh, this study after I've built it to my chart, um, these set of defaults will get set at the very beginning. Um, this code is only run when you're adding a study to a chart. Okay, So um, 
this is like if you had, let's say you wanted to add an input so that you could set a setting for this study. Let's say I wanted to add an input called favorite number, and I'm going to call that favorite number, and I'm going to set it to SC input zero. We're just going to start programming here. I, I, don't, I don't really have a flow here. I'm just kind of going out the top of my head. Basically, I'm going to prompt the user who's adding this study to uh, enter an input, and it's going to be the first input. Um, if you don't know what zero-based indexes are, you should probably search Google for that. It's probably out of the scope of this video. And I'm going to call this variable i i for input, favorite number, and it's a type sc input reference. And so in here, in my default section, what I need to do is I'm going to create i favorite number dot name, and I'm going to set the name. This is what's going to be displayed in Sierra Chair when we add the study as the as the input setting. What is your favorite number? Okay. And I'm going to terminate that line with a semicolon, and then I'm also going to set it i favorite number dot set integer. I'm going to set the default value to 99. So the default value is going to be 99. Okay. So what do we have here in our program so far? So far we have our our study is called Tutorial One. We are creating a little messaging object that we haven't been using. We have one input. It's uh, set to the first input in Sierra. Uh, the input variable name is favorite number. Inside our set defaults code block, we are setting the name of this study to tutorial one, and we are setting it to be rendered onto graph region zero, which is actually the price graph here. This is graph region one. This is graph region zero, and if you keep adding studies, it'd be two, three, four, etc. And then for our variable favorite number, I'm setting the name of it in the settings section to say what is your favorite number, and then I'm setting the default of it to 99. Okay. And so what we're going to do now, I'm going to save this file. I'm saving it as tutorial01.cpp. And the place where I'm storing it, if you look up here, I'm storing it in C colon Sierra chart ACS source. This is where you need to put your C++ files. I guess technically you could put them somewhere else, but and then you need to find them when you're trying to compile. But this is the easiest place to put them. This is where I put mine. Sierra chart slash ACS source. The next thing you want to do is you want to come over to Sierra. And under the analysis tab, you'll see build custom studies DLL right here. You want to click that. It's going to pop up this window. Okay, this window is going to have this section here: files to compile. Don't worry about this visual C++ path. Ignore that. Files to compile. Tutorial 1.C++. If you have nothing there, go to File, Select Files, and then select your file. It's in ACS source. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Hit Open. And then what I'm going to do is go to the Build menu, and I'm going to click Remote Build. Okay, so this is going to send my file to Sierra's servers and use their compiler, their remote compiler, to compile my C++ file into a DLL file, which Sierra will then use. Okay, and so this is the text that we want to see. We want to see remote build succeeded. Okay, we want to see that. And it wrote a file, a DLL file. It built a compiled version of this program I just wrote, and it put it into Sierra chart data. Okay, so our file our source code file C++, but this compiled version uh, DLL. Okay, so our file is set, and um, we can go ahead and minimize that. And then I'm going to go to analysis, and I'm going to go to studies. You can hit F6 as well, and then I'm going to go to add custom study. This button right down here, and then I'm going to look for there it is, Frozen Tundra Tutorial One. So this is the file, and inside there we have one study. It's called Tutorial 1. Let's go ahead and look back. That comes from this part of the name right here. So the file name, the SCDLL name, Frozen Tundra Tutorial 1, that is this part right here. And then the actual name of the study is the in the function uh, uh, definition here, Tutorial 1, and that's this right here. Um, or sorry, right, this right here, and I'm going to check show settings, and I'm going to hit add, and what you're going to see is the settings window for the study up here for tutorial one, and what does it say up here? What is your favorite number? Let's go ahead and look, and what is your favorite number is the text I have assigning to this input favorite number, okay? The first input, index zero, the name is set to what is your favorite number, and I have a default of 99. 
So what is our default? It's automatically set to 99 right there. Okay. So I'm going to go hit, I, I, I want to leave that. That's okay. I like that. And there is my custom study added to um, Sierra. I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. And that's it. Now the study doesn't really do anything. So there's nothing to have happen here. It's just sitting it's, it's sitting here, it's right here. You can see it up here, tutorial one. I can right click on it and go back to the settings menu, but this study doesn't actually do anything. So let's make it do some stuff. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is let's add it to, uh, let, let's spit out the number that was uh, set to the favorite number. Let's spit that out to the uh, debug log in Sierra. So this is uh, something that's pretty useful to, to use. So what we wanna do as say, uh, remember this message object we had up here? Um, I'm gonna use that to format my, my message to the debug logger. I'm gonna say message, which is the name of the variable up here, which is of type SC string. And I'm gonna say format, and I'm gonna say favorite number um, is equal to, and then I'm gonna put a percent sign and a D. And what that is, is it's a, it's a special piece of code that tells the compiler to substitute into this area whatever I put after this comma right here. And after this comma, I'm going to put I favorite number dot get integer. And then I'm going to close the brackets and put a semicolon. So let's go over this again. So I'm taking this messaging object right here. I am telling the uh, program that I want to format this messaging object specifically and I want to set it as a string that says my favorite number equals and then percent %d gets substituted by the value that I have here. I could easily do something like this, 42, and %d percent %d would become 42. But what I want is it to put whatever our favorite number is, um, I want to get that integer and stuff it into here, into this message. And then what I'm going to do is SC, um, and what is the name of the function? I think it's like add message to log, I think. And the first uh, argument is the message, and then the second one is to print it, uh, a flag. And I'm just going to go ahead and compile this. I don't remember if that's the exact name. So I'm bringing up my advanced custom studies DLL. Again, this is from build custom DLL right here. I have my tutorial one. I'm going to go ahead and hit remote build and it's going to start building and we'll see if I got the name of that function correct. We did, we did. And so immediately on my other screen, my, uh, my log popped up and look what I have printing here on my message log. Let me see if I can drag this down here. Uh, it's on the chart of Baba. The study is called tutorial one and the string that's getting printed is favorite number equals 99. Okay, we move that off and let's come here and let's say, um, let's, let's show my favorite number. So I'm gonna add the word my here. I'm gonna save this file, okay? And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to rebuild my project. So this, I'm showing you how to make new updates to your files. And once this finishes compiling successfully, you're going to see the word my is now being added. Before it just said favorite number, but now it's saying my favorite number. So this is how you send updates to your code. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the variable from 99 to, let's say, 102. Okay, and I hit OK. And all of a sudden you see, because it's accessing that inputs setting, it is changing and dumping it as 102, okay? So that is how you do that. Um, I, let me see what else. Uh, I think that might be a pretty good stopping point for the first program. Now you might wonder, well, what good is that? I don't need to dump to a message log. I need to create fancy, um, fancy indicators and all this stuff. I need to access data, uh, candlestick data. I need to access volume data. I need to do all that. Yes, all of that can be done in Sierra, but it is probably beyond the scope of a beginning hello world type of example that this is. Um, I can try to make some other 
uh, example videos or you can just go to the github link that I have posted in the description of this video and you can check out some of the other more complex code that is um, being shared with the entire Sierra chart development community and it shows um, how to accomplish some more complex things so I hope that helps as a as a beginner uh, trying to get Sierra chart set up and getting your first program going